weight saving exercises include a perspex rear screen, a carbon fibre front lid with a Porsche sticker for the emblem rather than the metal badge, with a little bit of sound, sound deadening removed too. That's why it's really loud in here, it's unlike a Carrera which is really cosseted and, and quite lavish. This is far more uncompromising, far more raw. You can really hear that engine and transmission behind me. And then of course you've got that huge carbon fibre rear wing sitting above the deck lid, helping to just keep those rear wheels planted to the floor, which is a bloody good thing to be honest, because this car, like the GT2 that we're putting this car against today, has no ESM. Now these cars are super, super rare. Rarer in fact than the 2.7 RS, the original Rentsport Porsche. Uh, they were all available in white and you either had red decals down the side like this one or blue. As well as the super super stiff suspension, what else have we got then? Well, look around in the interior. You've got club sport seats which really keep your sides held and pinned back. Uh, the seats get a bit wider at the top so you can get my shoulders in nicely which is great. No rear seats which is great because in a 911 they're bloody useless anyway. The steering is so bloody focused, it's pulling the car all over the road. It's just searching for every little crevice it can find and I'm literally having to wrestle the steering wheel all the time um, just to keep the car in a straight line. But I love it, it's got so much feel coming through, so much more feel than my 996 Carrera. The difference between this and the GT2 though is obviously this is naturally aspirated so it hasn't got quite that immediate whoosh that the GT2's turbochargers give you to prepare yourself up the road. With this it's all about the engine working under its own esteem. It does rev all the way to 8000 RPM though and it sounds bloody great. Now the whole reason we're doing this test today is because right now a GT3 and an RS and a GT2 996 are around the same sort of money. Whereas the 
ride over the surface. The ride uh, itself, in terms of its suspension, is actually a lot more supple than the GT3 RS. It's a lot more forgiving. Uh, and yet the trick up the GT2 sleeve is its sheer power. We've just dropped the gear and it accelerates again. Frenetic pace. It's unrelenting. As soon as that taco gets past 2,000 RPM, this car is gone and it just doesn't relent. Whereas the GT3 RS, you have to wind the car up a bit more to its 8,000 RPM red line. With this, it's just foot down and go. Now that can be scary. As I say, don't forget, this only has rear wheel drive and it has no traction to kind of get you out of trouble. And uh, with this sort of power, trouble's never too far away. Now for a lot of people, that sheer rush of the GT2 is probably what makes it more fun to drive. But for me, no, I prefer the RS. I prefer that naturally aspirated engine push, I prefer the peaky nature of the engine. I enjoy seeing that needle wind round the taco and you having to keep it in the kind of upper echelons of the taco in order to get the best pace out of it. You can be quite ham fisted with this and yes, like I say, you can get into trouble if you don't think about your movements, but for me, the art of driving and the fun of driving is all about cornering. I think the, the adrenaline rush from a GT2 just comes from this straight line speed, really. 